More than a dozen people killed this weekend as severe weather rocks the southeast and right here locally in South Georgia and the Machado Valley. And that's it. The Atlanta Falcons, NFC champions, on to Super Bowl 51. And excitement for the Atlanta Falcons as the team prepares for their second ever Super Bowl appearance. On your side, this is News 3 This Morning. And good morning, everyone. Welcome to News 3 This Morning, taking a live look from the Phoenix City Amphitheater. It is about 50 degrees out there on this Monday morning, and we're so glad you're starting this Monday morning with us right here on News 3. Good morning, everyone. I'm Greg Lloyd. And I'm Mercer Vanture. We had a crazy weekend from the Falcons winning the NFC Championship going on to the Super Bowl. Of course, I mentioned that one first because everybody's going nuts about that. They are. To our crazy weather. We both covered it this yes, weekend. We were Mercer, out looking was, at the crazy weather. It was intense from here, as you mentioned, all the way down through South Georgia, which really received uh, the bulk of some bad weather. And we're going to talk about it all this morning as we start off. And that is our top story this morning. Seven counties waking up in Georgia under a state of emergency following devastating storms over the the weekend. Governor Good. Nathan Deal he has issued a state of emergency for these counties. Atkinson, Berrien, Brooks, Colquitt, Cook, Lowndes, and Thomas counties. Calling all that severe weather and all those tornado touchdowns. Deal says the state will make all resources available to these heavily impacted areas of the storm. The state of emergency is going to remain in effect for seven days. Now the storm taking a deadly toll. It did. It was horrible. 18 people have been confirmed dead in the southeast. 14 of those deaths in Georgia alone. Oh my goodness, devastating. And the storm system plummeting the region during its two-day sweep, it spun off apparent tornadoes and left scattered destruction. The violent, um, the very violent weekend of violent weather has left crumbling trailer homes down trees, leaving behind devastation in its wake. Four people also died Saturday in Mississippi. Yet the storm system's deadliest toll came to Cook County, Georgia, just one just before sun, daybreak on Sunday, when an apparent tornado blew through the Sunshine Mobile Home Park in Cook County, killing seven people. Cook County Coroner Tim Purvis confirmed the deaths at the mobile home park. Purvis added that roughly half of the 40 homes in that park were completely leveled. There were initial reports of an eighth death in Cook County, but Georgia's state of emergency officials later said that, that information was incorrect. Right now, there are also five people unaccounted for. Albany was also hit by storms on Sunday. That was just a little bit south of us. Now, you're looking at video captured by storm chasers of what appears to be a funnel cloud. Right there. The National Weather Service said a tornado right. rolled near Albany at the Maybe. same time. The town is seeing significant damage I with multiple trees and power lines down. And in a Facebook Don't Live really video, County Commission Chair Chris Cohillas described the town as looking as if it were a nuclear bomb went off. He added, quote, this is really bad and we need a lot of help. Now, time for your weather on the threes. That thing you saw was not a funnel cloud. That was a major wedge tornado on the ground that ripped through Albany. And uh, they um, had a, a real uh, serious situation down there, and it could have been worse. It could also have been worse for us, uh, but we managed to get a little bit lucky there. Everything yesterday developed off to the east and really didn't affect our coverage area that much, with one exception, uh, one storm that blew through the Auburn Opelika area uh, yesterday. And uh, that was not as serious is all the activity that's going on to our east. So we were lucky with this system, which was more like a spring system than a winter system for sure. 50 degrees in Columbus this morning. It's cloudy. We've seen some light rain showers falling. The wind that's out of the west at 13 miles per hour, and that's what we will be dealing with much of the day today. Have a look at the rain. There it is. Kind of moving out. It was raining a little bit harder in Columbus just an hour or so ago. Now we're left with mostly just light showers and a few sprinkles, and this, of course, is occurring behind the weather system, which is now long past us, but it's going to be kicking up those winds today. A few showers could last through the early morning, then uh, through midday, mostly cloudy, and by the afternoon, a windy high of 62 degrees. But we are done with storm systems for a while, at least major ones. And none of that looks uh, like it'll be reaching us in the week ahead. In fact, it looks rather quiet. I'll have more on that coming up in our next weather. Greg? Thank you, Kurt. Well, severe weather hit the Opelika community hard on Sunday afternoon, causing damage to homes and neighborhoods. WRBL's News 3's Ashley Lewis spoke with the folks in Opelika community to get their reaction. 
The 2000 block of 3rd Avenue was hit by damaging winds this afternoon. Folks tell us what happened when the storm hit this Opelika community. The strongest storms to actually do damage to the home. So I saw an entire length of downed fence along an apartment complex on my drive back, so pretty hard hit. I was eating dinner with my wife and we all of a sudden we heard this uh, a uh, real loud noise like a freight train and it was over, over just in a few seconds. Das Buckaloo says he's lived in Opelika for years and he didn't expect the storm to do so much damage. I'm shocked but also kind of amazed that it didn't do more damage. It really only uh, took out a few shingles and uh, a cap that's on top of a, an old unused chimney. Ellen Green just moved into this home a year ago and after the storm her roof was completely gone. The tornado just hit it. I mean, took the roof off, knocked the trees down, um, the damage to the ceilings inside. Green credits divine intervention for keeping her and her husband safe in the storm. The Lord told me to get in the closet because it wasn't much going on, but I just told my husband we have to get in the closet. Now it's here, but this was no noise at that time. As soon as we got in the closet, heard the, the roaring, which wasn't extremely loud. Heard the boom from the tree, um, and then it was over. And in a matter of seconds, the Greens lost their home. It just took it off, and it's all, all around the neighborhood. The majority of the roof is on a neighbor's house over. As of now, the Greens are back at square one, hoping their insurance will cover the damage that was done. We have to talk to our insurance company and uh, find out what we can do from here. One community impacted by a storm, and they say they're just grateful to be alive. On your side in Opelika, Ashley Lewis, WRBL News 3. Alabama Disaster Relief had crews on the scene, of course. Obviously, yes. they're going to be there helping all those people who are affected by this weather system. They do, and Mercer folks in that community say it could take weeks to clear all the tree and debris from that area. Well, this morning, people in Catala are cleaning up after being rocked by severe weather over the weekend. The Catala Youth Sports Complex on Chambliss Road was destroyed from Saturday's storm. News 3's Chief Meteorologist Bob Jeswald says a radar indicated that a tornado hit that community. The estimated damage at the sports facility is at least $20,000. If you're interested in making a donation to help rebuild the complex, you can find the link to the GoFundMe page on our website, WRBL.com. All right, in addition to that, Smith Station also had some very significant damage from Saturday's storms. Yes, it did, Mercer, taking a huge toll on the school's athletic complex. Backstops were down at the softball and baseball fields. Bleachers were taken down, scoreboards were left leaning. Uh, the storage buildings, they were at the complex, they were also taken down. But the baseball and softball teams of Smith Station High School, they have their first game scheduled for February 20th, and they hope to have the fields ready before then. Well, on a lighter note this morning, taking a look into the world of sports, if you haven't heard, it is huge news for the Atlanta Falcons. For the first time in almost 20 years, that's two, two decades. decades. Can you believe uh, it? Yes. The Atlanta Falcons headed to the Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. That's right. This is a special moment for fans. Very special. But the road getting to this point hasn't been easy. Going to run. Has some room and a touchdown. Okay, but Sunday against a very talented Green Bay Packers, they destroyed them. Plain and simple, destroyed them, made them pay and played Atlanta Falcons football. The time is now, and I am just so excited to say that the Falcons are headed to the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 51 in Houston. Yes, and our Natalie Pellicetti will have a complete wrap-up of the event full game just ahead in our sports report. Well, we're just getting started right here on News 3 this morning. President Donald Trump immediately put his pen to work. Find out the latest reversal of policy that the new president made. He made moves to suspend indefinitely. Well, weather made plenty of news over the weekend, and one thing probably that kind of went unnoticed is the fact that we had more rain in Columbus. We now have had, with 11.14 inches, the wettest January in the city's history. Uh, and just think, we were talking drought not too long ago. At any rate, uh, the rain is mostly over for us, and we are expecting a mostly dry week and a much quieter one than the last few days, which are rather extraordinary considering it's January. I've got a full story on your weather coming up after the break. But first, oh, look at those raindrops at Tumor's raindrops. Corner. Um, it's actually pretty calm this morning. We did have some rain, just like Kurt said, and it's going to be a little windy. Um, it's a rather warm morning again, 50 degrees. It's 410 Central Time, 510 Eastern Time. So glad you're waking up with us on News 3 this morning. Be right back. <laughs> 